In this video, we're going to go over the top five medications to treat depression that you can afford. These are the most common go-to medications your doctor will likely talk to you about when you're looking for a medication to treat your condition. Learn about the good and the bad of each one to help make your next doctor's visit more productive. Welcome to Family Med. I'm Dr. Richardson, and this is your home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. This is the channel that focuses on bringing better health to your home. In this episode, we're going to go over the top five medications that I use to treat depression in my clinic. There are certainly a lot of medications out there, so we can't review every one in one single video. But I thought it'd be helpful to have more of a broad overview of some of the most common ones that we use side by side so that you can see which one may be better for you. Now the great thing about all these medications is they're all generic and they won't break the bank if you need to be on them. However, ultimately the decision to start on a medicine and which one is best is really something you need to make with your own doctor. But understanding some of the pros and cons of each can help you have that conversation. I've gone over each one of these medications separately in videos of their own. So if you want to dive deeper into each one of them, I'll put a link to the video up here when we talk about it. So let's get into it. The first one we're going to talk about is Lexapro or escitalopram. This is a great medication that falls in the class of medicines called SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Lexapro is usually my first go-to medication when I have somebody who's coming in with both depression and anxiety. It tends to work really well for those two conditions combined. It's a once-a-day medication that most patients tend to tolerate really well. It comes in 5, 10, and 20 milligram tablets, with a max typical dose of 20 milligrams. Now, side effects tend to be minimal for most people, although just like any medication, they are possible. More common side effects would be some headaches, nausea, tiredness, or difficulty sleeping, some dry mouth, constipation, or abdominal pain. The good news is, though, that most of these side effects tend to go away after a few weeks. It's possible to have some libido changes and difficulty with intimacy with the medication as well, but I tend not to see that complaint as often with this medication as maybe for some other ones. Now, more concerning side effects would include having worsening symptoms of depression or anxiety. It can also put you at risk for certain heart arrhythmias, electrolyte disturbances, allergic reactions, and something called serotonin syndrome, where your body gets too much serotonin. This is very rare, but can present with symptoms like agitation, confusion, rapid heart rate, high blood pressure, dilated pupils, loss of muscle coordination, muscle rigidity, diarrhea, and heavy sweating. If you think this is happening to you, get to your doctor or the emergency room right away. These possible reactions are not specific to Lexapro and can happen with any of the medications that we're going to discuss. Now the other thing I like about Lexapro is it's been generic for some time, so it's pretty affordable. You can usually find a 30-day supply for around $9 to $10, either at Walmart or using one of the, good, uh, the discount medication sites like GoodRx. Now the second medication we're going to talk about is Zoloft or Sertraline. This is a medication that's been around since the early 90s. It's also an SSRI. I tend to use this medication more when someone is strictly suffering from depression or if they have some OCD tendencies or even some PTSD. It can help with anxiety, but I tend not to see that it works as well as others with this. It's also a once a day medication that comes in 25, 50, and 100 milligram pills with a max dose of around 200 milligrams. I like this medication because a little more flexibility with changing the dose. If somebody is a little more sensitive to medications, it makes it a little bit easier to increase or decrease the doses. Now the side effects of Zoloft are similar to that one which we discussed about with Lexapro. I can't say there's much difference overall between the two other than the realm of changes in libido and intimacy. I definitely see more complaints in regards to this while taking Zoloft. In fact, for those guys out there, we actually use this as a benefit sometimes when you have problems with going too fast. Now, the same kind of more serious side effects apply here. The only one that is slightly different is we do see a slight increased risk of bleeding with sertraline. So if you're on blood thinners, it may be something you need to be cautious of. Now, Zoloft also has a benefit of being generic, so it's usually pretty affordable. You're typically looking around $9 to $10 a month at most of your major pharmacies. The third medication that I recommend frequently is Wellbutrin or Bupropion. This medication has been around since the mid-1980s. It's in a different class of medications than Lexapro or Zoloft. It belongs to a family of medications called NDRIs, or Norepinephrine Dopamine Reuptake Inhibitors. It works more in a different area of the brain chemicals that change mood. 
since this does work differently, it does have some different effects that the other medications don't. While butrin, it tends to be a little more motivating or elevating type of medication. I like to use this when people's depression really just keeps them down and unmotivated. When they really have a lack of interest and unable to accomplish much, it seems to help them more. This medication also has a few other side benefits. It's one of the main ingredients of a newer weight loss medication, so we can see some benefit in the realm of weight loss while taking it. It's also used, used a lot for smoking cessation. And we also use it to treat ADD or ADHD type symptoms. So if you're in a depression that has you unmotivated, you're overeating, smoke, and can't concentrate, then this may be a good choice. Side effects tend to be pretty similar to those that we've discussed about the others. Now the main differences though, is that while well, butrin out of all of them doesn't tend to affect your intimate relations. In fact, we'll sometimes add Wellbutrin when you're on other antidepressant medications if you're having those kind of side effects. Now, it comes in several different formulations, from immediate release that you take three times a day, sustained release that you take twice a day, or an extended release that is once a day. Doses range from 75 to 300 milligrams. Now, not all is good with Wellbutrin though. There are certain people who don't do well with it. First of all, Wellbutrin tends to not do very well when you have a lot of anxiety. Typically, when you have bad anxiety, well, butrin can actually make this worse. Some people who don't feel overly anxious when starting it can start having panic attacks. So I like to steer away from this one for those who are anxious. Now, the second thing you need to be cautious about is that well, butrin can decrease what we call your seizure threshold. This means that it can make it more likely that you can have seizures. So if you have a prior history of seizures, then you probably should look elsewhere. And just like the others, though, well, butrin is now generic and it's usually pretty affordable. A typical 30-day supply is between $9 to $20 a month. The fourth medication is one called Cymbalta or Duloxetine. This is the newest of the medications that we are talking about today. It's been around since 2004 in the United States. It belongs to the class of medications called SNRI, or Selective Norepinephrine Reuptake Inhibitors. These medications work on both hormones serotonin and norepinephrine. Because of that, it has some properties that some of the other medications we discussed do not. Cymbalta works well in treating both depression as well as anxiety, but it's also thought to have some properties to help treat pain. So we'll use it to treat fibromyalgia, arthritis, and different kinds of nerve pain, such as those you can get with diabetes or other nerve injuries. Now, interestingly enough, we can also use it to treat hot flash symptoms related to menopause. So if you're a woman going through menopause with diabetes and fibromyalgia, bad knees, who also has depression and anxiety, then this is the perfect medication for you. Now the possible side effects from Cymbalta would be pretty similar to that of the other medications that we've discussed. Now its effects on intimacy tend to be a little bit less than what you experience while taking Zoloft or Prozac, but it's still possible. Now Cymbalta comes in capsules of 20, 30, and 60 milligrams, with 60 milligrams being the top dose that you would take once a day. This is a great overall medication that can be used for several different symptoms. Now it's in the same, same price category as the others, so if you're paying cash for it, you should expect to pay around nine to twenty dollars using a discount coupon like GoodRx. The fifth medication we're going to talk about today is Prozac or fluoxetine. This is the original SSRI or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. It's been on the market since 1997 here in the United States. Now this medication works really well to treat conditions like depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and a severe form of PMS. It can also have some effect on anxiety, but I don't tend to see this as being quite as successful as some of the others that we have discussed today. It's not commonly used as some of the other newer medications that we have out there, but it definitely still is used, and it definitely has its place. Now, I like using Prozac because it's a little more reliable. It's not as fast acting as some of the others, but on the flip side of that, it also doesn't get out of your system as fast. I find this really beneficial in treating people who have a harder time remembering to take their medications. Now, you always need to remember to try and take these kind of medications daily. But out of all the medications that we discuss, I see less problems with people who have skipped these doses, feeling the withdrawal symptoms that commonly happen when you abruptly, abruptly stop these medications. It's also a little bit easier tapering down off the medication when you decide to stop it than some of the others. Now, with this one as well, the possible side effects of this medication will be pretty similar to what we've already discussed. I don't see that Prozac has any more or less side effects than any others. Now, problems with intimacy are probably the most common concern that I see with this medication. And as with all of them, you definitely need to watch for worsening symptoms of depression or suicidal symptoms. Prozac comes in at 10, 
20 and 40 milligram daily pill with a max dose of 80 milligrams or a 90 milligram once a week formulation. Prozac tends to be one of the more affordable ones that you can find. Now for a typical 30 day supply, you can get it for $4 at Walmart. So you may have noticed that I didn't really rank any of them in any specific order as far as which one is best. That's because you really can't say which one is better than the other. It's so individual and each one tends to have some benefits over the other. The best one is the one that's gonna work for you. Sometimes we have to take a trial and error approach to find the right one and that's okay. The good news is there are multiple different types of medications that we can try to find the right one for you that will fit for you. If you want to dive deeper in any of these other medications, go back and click on the cards that pop up here throughout the video, or I'll place a link in the description below for each one as well. Depression and anxiety and other mental health conditions can be very debilitating. They are as real as any other medical condition out there. When you have true clinical depression, taking something like Prozac, Lexapro, Wellbutrin, Zoloft or Cymbalta, or any of the other ones out there can be a life altering step. These medications can make a huge difference in your life. They're certainly not for everybody, and yes, there are other non-medication options out there that may work for you. If, however, you and your doctor feel that one of these medications are the best option for your treatment plan, you now have a good foundation of knowledge of what to expect and what kind of side effects to watch out for. And having that information can be really powerful in your life. This certainly isn't an all-inclusive and in-depth discussion of everything that we could be discussed regarding these medications. That's not what I'm trying to do here. My purpose in sharing this is to help give information that you can think about to discuss with your own doctor. So please, don't take this as a direct medical advice. Take everything you learned today, discuss it with your doctor and how it applies to you in your own situation. Now, if you found this information to be helpful, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. And if your health is important to you, consider subscribing and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our other content. And if you're still wondering whether you're suffering from depression, keep watching right here to learn about the top 10 signs that you may be suffering from depression. Review them and see if you need to be seeking help. And click here to learn about some non-medication options that you can do to help treat your depression. So until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.